was the Olympia your first outing as a professional in Silverton? Yeah. As a matter of fact, the 1979 Southern Professional Cup. Oh, I remember. Yeah, there was a, a sudden spate of Grand Prix. I don't think we called them Grand right. Prix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that was my first professional contest, and I mm. went there in tremendous condition. Mm. I went there in a in top physical condition and also mental condition. Mm. I went there feeling the way I had felt for the 76th America mm. and during the 76th America. Mm. I knew that I was in my best shape and it would take a monster to beat me. Mm. Uh, I was very happy too because I was experimenting immediately prior to that for the first time with the rest pause training something that Dorian Yates has been doing lately right <laughs> and it worked I had cut my workout back to only seven sets and achieved a very very heavy that was one of my most heavily muscled conditions mm. uh, my muscles I remember my muscles even feeling heavier I just felt Right. Heavily muscled, and more heavily muscled at that contest than at any other contest. Right. And I was almost as ripped as I was at the 80 Olympia. I was very big and very hard. Well, about one and a half years ago, I had reached an impasse in my progress. Though I was training in my usual fashion, that is very heavy with all-out effort each and every set, I couldn't seem to add much in the way of additional mass. Discussing this thoroughly with a stress physiologist, I discovered that my body had adapted to a certain level of intensity and to certain methods, namely pre-exhaustion and forced rep training. The problem was that now I was so strong and my ability and willingness to generate maximum effort so dramatically increased that each rep of a normal six repetition set was severe enough that the oxygen debt and lactic acid buildup was immediate from the first rep and prevented a maximum all-out effort at the end. What I needed was a method that provided for intense maximal contractions while slowing the buildup of metabolites and the onset of oxygen debt, which prevent ultra-intense effort. The method that fulfilled these requirements was rest-pause training. With rest-pause training, I warm up a given area thoroughly first by doing a couple of sets with a lighter weight leading up to the heavy weight, then select a weight for the first repetition of the set that is a maximum for a single attempt. Of course, this ensures maximum intensity of effort. After performing that first all-out rep, I put the weight down and rest for a maximum of 10 seconds to allow for the oxygen debt to right itself and to allow the waste products to exit the muscle. This will allow my second repetition with the same weight to be another all-out maximum intensity rep. You will need a partner for rest-pause training, obviously, as you may not be quite able to do a complete second rep without his assistance and be sure that such assistance is just enough so you are barely able to complete that second rep. After the second rep, put the weight down again and rest for 10 seconds. By this time, however, the weight should be reduced by probably 20% so you can do at least one full rep by yourself. After 10 seconds rest, pick up the reduced weight and perform another deliberate controlled rep. Rest again before the fourth rep maybe up to 15 seconds now as you'll be very fatigued and do the fourth rep with your partner's assistance. I wouldn't try to do more than four or five reps at the very most in rest pause fashion as it is, as it is very very intense and demanding. So demanding that you really can't appreciate it until you try it. You must realize that with rest pause training every single rep of the set is an all-out maximum effort not just the final rep as is the case with conventional methods. This is what makes it so different and so productive. The intensity has taken a quantum leap upwards. I would also recommend no more than one set per exercise in rest pause fashion for the same reason. Remember, I can't stress it enough, the higher the intensity, 
the greater the likelihood of overtraining. Remember that once you induce muscular growth stimulation through hard training, you must allow that growth to take place. If you're constantly overtraining and not giving yourself enough time between workouts to recover, how can you expect to grow? Remember, you've got to recover first. Growth takes place secondarily. I would also suggest that you do not do more than a total of three sets per body part. You can also incorporate rest pause into your normal heavy duty routine. For instance, when training your chest, you might do one set of incline presses, rest pause style, and then proceed with one or two cycles of pre-exhaustion with forced reps and negatives and so forth. If you desire to try rest pause exclusively, don't continue the program more than four to six weeks as it is as mentally demanding as it is physically and can cause you to burn out and lose motivation. However, if you decide to use rest pause, stick to the fundamental heavy duty concepts. Number one, perform all movements very deliberately and under control. Don't try to yank, jerk, or bounce heavy weights. That's what causes injury to the joints. Lifting heavy weights does not cause injury. It is when you try to bounce, jerk, and uh, thrust the heavy weights by using the force of momentum that you injure the connective tissue. Number two, always emphasize the negative or the lowering of the weight. There are those exercise physiologists who believe that the great majority of the benefit to be derived from weight training is had from the negative aspect of the rep, that is lowering the weight. What's that? Number three, keep your sets low. What are you going to do? Never, never do more than five sets per body part. As you continue to progress, I suppose it's somewhat natural to want to add more and more to your workout because your enthusiasm is growing and your energy is burgeoning. However, perhaps the most important exercise you can perform is the exercise of restraint. Restrain that tendency to always want to do more. Remember, your body has to recover, and when you do too many high-intensity sets, you're not going to give your body enough time to recover between workouts. No number four, never train more than four days a week, and in some cases, even four days out of every seven days is too much training. What should guide you is how much progress you're making. If you don't realize immediate progress from heavy duty training or rest pause training, then you're probably not giving yourself sufficient time to recover. The intensity of effort involved with heavy duty training is more than sufficient to in induce growth stimulation. So if in fact you aren't realizing such progress, then you're not giving yourself enough time to recover between workouts and grow as well. Maybe training four days out of every nine or ten days would be better. Again, these things aren't preordained. They're not scratched in stone. No one ever said you had to set up your training routine according to a rigid seven-day-a-week schedule. Maybe four days out of every ten days would be best. If, this, if the intensity is sufficient, then the only other factor that can be blamed for your not realizing more progress is not sufficient time to recover between workouts.